Okay. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Jack Smythe, the uh, Municipal Authority Engineer, also the Township Traffic and Transportation Engineer. We thought with the Municipal Authority it would be good to come in and, and take a step back, actually. Uh, the Municipal Authority has been going since 2016, uh, but we really wanted to focus on what's been happening in the last five years uh, because it's pretty substantial and it's really provided quite a value to the township. So we really wanted to bring that out. So on the agenda, we'll have some basic facts. Uh, there are the projects that we did from 2016 through 2018. We'll just touch on them quickly. Then we'll uh, take a look at the projects since 2018 and do a final summary. So what is the municipal authority boundary? The boundary of the municipal authority is generally the old Fort Washington office park, uh, Susquehanna Road to the north and the Drescher Triangle area. On the east, so east side, you have the rail line and the Pennsylvania Turnpike. On the south, you have Pennsylvania Avenue. And to the west, you have Camp Hill Road uh, and some of the interior roads. Really, the, the municipal authority is served by Commerce Drive, Delaware Drive, Virginia Drive, and then out through Drescher Town Road. Some basic facts about the authority. It's comprised of 134 properties. Uh, the purpose, what is its purpose? It's really to provide transportation projects for all modes of traffic and transportation. So that's vehicles, but also focusing on bikes, pedestrians, transit, freight. Uh, its purpose is to improve stormwater management and really build off of the flood retarding structures that were built in 2013, 2014 uh, for the Pine Run and Wrap Run and advance general economic development for the service area. Uh, and now it's the greater Fort Washington district. The municipal authority boundary is a little bit bigger. There are no Upper Dublin tax dollars that are included in the budgets of the Municipal Authority. It is strictly from assessments. Uh, each year, $525,000 is collected from the 134 properties based on their taxes uh, with the county, and that's to pay off a bond that was taken in 2018 for $6 million. That's what has been paying for these local matches on the projects. The board is uh, comprised of five appointed volunteers. We meet uh, every second Friday here in the auditorium at 7.30 in the morning. And the, it is a municipal entity, so we go very strong after grants. What are the benefits of the municipal authority? First, and, and you hear this a lot, but it really is true. It's to improve safety within the greater Fort Washington district area. Uh, it used to be four lanes, two in each direction, 90 degree turns, a lot of traffic speeding issues, uh, things of that nature, didn't have the best pedestrian facilities throughout. So safety is a big issue. The transition to a mixed use destination center. And that's something that's really important uh, regionally with the county as well. And that's something that the municipal authority and the township are working with the county on, making the greater Fort Washington district a destination center. Uh, mitigate the traditional flooding, build off of the flood retarding structures, provide multimodal alternatives mm -hmm. and connect with the SEPTA regional rail station on Pennsylvania Avenue. That's been a big theme of the grant applications and has really been uh, something that has helped get these grants. Promote and construct critical connections to improve walkability and bikeability, the cross county trail, and how do you get to it. Introduce traffic calming measures. We'll, you'll hear the term road diet. Road diet is taking the four lanes that used to be out there and narrowing it at to three lanes, one in each direction and a common center turn lane. 
That common center turn lane is a very big safety feature. It allows for protected areas to turn left into driveways. Not having two lanes in each direction means you're going the speed of the person in front of you that is driving. That helps traffic calming. Improve access, and you'll hear about the zip ramp. And fund township infrastructure that reduces past, current, and future maintenance needs. It's really important to note that the municipal authority cannot do a township maintenance project. That's not its role. But with all of these projects, there has been a lot of investment in roadway reconstruction, drainage, sidewalk, trail, that has taken a lot of the maintenance responsibilities and has helped with the township uh, on that front. So from 2016 through 2018, uh, we really were focusing on the bridges, the Pine Run bridges on Virginia Drive uh, between Camp Hill Road and 1100 Virginia. There are two bridges and the Rap Run culvert out by 520 right out, out front here. The two bridges were actually listed by Montgomery County as uh, being structurally deficient. And that is why we were able to get grant funding towards those bridges. They were local bridges. Uh, they are local bridges. So they had a real need to be rebuilt. When we rebuilt them, instead of the four lanes with one sidewalk, they were built with three lanes, a full sidewalk on one side, and wide enough on the other side to accommodate the cross-county trail. The other thing is the bridges were raised up. So we got more hydraulic capacity, more water flowing underneath those bridges by the tune of 200% for each bridge. For the culvert, the wrap run culvert, we were also able to raise the road, not quite as much. So we got about 160% more capacity going through that culvert area. These projects from 2016 through 2018 had a local match that was from the township. This was before the municipal authority started the, the local match. So the township put in $3 million towards these projects, and then it flipped over to the municipal authority. From 2016 through 2018, we also did two sections of the, uh, I'm sorry, this is actually from 2018 now. So from 2018 through 2020, we started concentrating on Virginia Drive and the Cross County Trail. And these were the first two projects starting at the Wrap Run Culvert area and going all the way out to Susquehanna. For one section of Virginia Drive, we did the road diet from four lanes to three. And one thing to really be clear about is you, you can't do a road diet everywhere. So Virginia Drive in the area of the Wawa and the Turnpike Interchange and out through Susquehanna there's just too much traffic and too many intersections, so a road diet is not appropriate there. But the traffic really goes down once you get past the 1100 Virginia area. Now you can introduce a road diet. So these projects really were focused on multimodalism. That's the value that was being brought to the township with these projects. Whereas before it was flood mitigation, these projects are more about multimodal transportation. And we got really good grant funding for these first projects. The next project is uh, Commerce Drive. This also had multimodalism. The Commerce Drive section from the 309 overpass around the corner to the Delaware Drive signal. I could have put safety here as well because we also took the old driveway that was going into where Trumark Financial is and did a shared driveway there between Trumark Financial and Lifetime Fitness and signalized that intersection. So that really has helped with safety through that area. Provides multimodalism. We have the 12-foot cross-county trail, and we have the SEPTA rail connection. So we're getting out the trail to Pennsylvania Avenue Pennsylvania Avenue already has the cross county trail that takes you down to the regional rail station. 
This project, uh, the continuation of Commerce Drive is in construction right now. Uh, this is taking the three lane condition from the 309 overpass down to Pennsylvania Avenue, but keeping the intersection the way that it was. We're not doing any road diet there. Uh, again, traffic calming, connect to the regional rail. This project also is really focused on the Bodenstein Channel as well, which has been a real flooding issue. And the culvert, the 160 foot culvert that captures the water from the Bodenstein Channel and carries it through a culvert to Pennsylvania Avenue and out to Sandy Run. We're gonna replace that culvert and we have a joint permit from the Corps of Engineers and DEP to reshape the channel. Whereas right now it's very gouged and curvilinear. It'll have a seven foot wide bottom, rock bottom, slopes that are two feet up, one feet over for the entire way, and then a bank in that 30 foot area that's owned by the township. That'll help the flow uh, and it'll help mitigate some of the flooding. Can't do it all because the pipe underneath the Pennsylvania Avenue stretch is gonna stay, but everything has been maximized to get the water through as best we can within the Bodenstein Channel area. This project again is building the Cross County Trail and also putting in sidewalk on the other side of the street. This constructed project, as you know, is the Virginia Drive and Camp Hill Road. Again, improving safety uh, and access. Um, when we did a count in 2018, we found that there were 155 illegal turns in a 14 hour period. Uh, this combined with the road diet has reduced speeds on Virginia Drive by about 10% when you, we did the speed studies before and after. The goal is, actually, is also to reduce crashes. There were eight crashes between June 2018 and October 2019 at the intersection to varying levels of severity. In construction as well as the Delaware Drive section and Virginia Drive section of the Cross County Trail and Road Diet. This one is wrapping up. Uh, all of the curb and reconstruction is done. When the weather uh, in March 1st, they'll come back out. They'll do the final wearing course and uh, put the top layer of paving in. This project actually also gave us the ability to put in three landscaped medians, trying to, again, introduce traffic calming and also aesthetics, help with the aesthetics. So this really has a critical connection component to it, this particular project. What you're looking at here is right out front and uh, the fourth lane if you see in the foreground where the utility pole is, that's a parking layby for the library and for drop-offs at the front lawn for programs and events. The trail is the asphalt, obviously, but there's a sidewalk from the parking layby area to the trail. Mm -hmm. And then the sidewalk continues up to the helipad out front. And then you can use the ramp to get down to the front door. So the trail will have full ADA compliance to get from the trail to the front door of the library now. The zip ramp, you may have heard of the zip ramp, it may sound like it will never get built, but it will, I'm here to tell you, it will. So the zip ramp is to improve access from the uh, Turnpike Interchange at Fort Washington It'll introduce a new ramp that will tie in as the fourth leg of the new traffic signal that was put in at Commerce Drive where the shared driveway is with Trumark Financial and Lifetime Fitness. This will help with access into the greater Fort Washington district. Why is it taking so long? The Turnpike Commission has their own independent project. If you notice, they're doing all electronic tolling coming up. And you may have seen on the main line, they've been building those little houses and the gantries. That is to collect your information 
between the interchanges instead of at the interchanges. The toll booths are gonna come out for all of the interchanges and they're gonna reconfigure the interchanges themselves because if you don't have toll booths, you gotta worry about the speeds going through the interchanges. Up until recently, they were really trying to figure out what that looked like. Now they know. And we're really working much, much better uh, with between our projects. So we estimate we'll be going to advertisement in the spring time frame of this year to get out for the zip ramp. Uh, this is the Dresher Town Road project. This takes the uh, cross county trail from Susquehanna Road where it ends now and follows along Virginia Drive and Dresher Town Road out to Beacon Hill and Bantry Drive. Really connects all of those residential neighborhoods to the cross county trail and all the way through. So this would get three miles of trail from Pennsylvania Avenue out to Beacon Hill and Bantry Drive. It also widens Virginia Drive and the area of Dresher Town Road down by Lime Kiln Pike to five lanes, and then narrows it down to three lanes as you come out to Beacon Hill and Bantry Drive. Again, one lane in each direction and a common center turn lane. Lastly, uh, we are proposing to realign Kirk's Lane. If you know Kirk's, Kirk's Lane is a very bad sight distance issue to get out of Kirk's Lane. So we do have a design that actually pushes Kirk's Lane into the grass area uh, to help with the sight distance uh, for, that, for that area. From a summary perspective, from 2018 through 2023, committed projects. The total cost of all of those projects, not the 2016 to 2018, but the 2018, the past five years, is close to $30 million, of which, whether it be through grant or development contributions or reimbursements with the North Wales Water Authority and Bucks County Water Sewer Authority, who have been uh, installing infrastructure with each of these projects, we've been able to have $21.8 million, about 73% funded through outside uh, non-local match. The local match at this time is 7.95 million. That's what the municipal authority has committed to. Since 2016, the total of the projects is actually $39.1 million. With <coughs> 27.6 million of that 70, over 70% 70 coming th from grants and other fundings. Um, I just wrote this down real quick. What that equates to, our three local bridges are gonna be replaced. Three culverts, like Rap Run and the Bodenstein culvert, there's one other. 1.7 miles of drainage pipe has gone into the roads as part of these projects with 155 inlet boxes that weren't out there before. Uh, 1.75 miles of full reconstruction of the road, all the way down to the sub base and all the way back up with new pavement. One mile of new or reconstructed sidewalk. So not the trail, but on the other side, the sidewalk. And then the three, three miles of the cross county trail. Thank you. <laughs> Great, <clears throat> pretty impressive. Questions for Jack from the left, Joe? Mm -hmm. Allison? No. Gary? No. Mary? No, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um? I have a question, but more an appreciation. Um, yeah, I think it's fantastic work. Um, especially, I like to ride my bike places, but that section of Cross County Trail that used to be a little bit of a snippet of Cross County Trail that is now becoming a huge section of Cross County Trail is, is fantastic. I was at a meeting of the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia last week, and 
the, you know, totally focused on the circuit trails, which is 800 miles of trails in the Philadelphia area, 800 miles of bike trails in the, in the Philadelphia area. And this cross country trail is super important. And I think the fact that Upper Dublin now has a very, very big section of trail complete forces now, encourages the county to really now also prioritize the, the section of trail to our left and to our right so that it really starts becoming a great connection. So I really appreciate your work. I think it's a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aaron. Great, great work from the municipal authority. Yeah, Claire. I just, I just want to really reemphasize, um, since 2018, $29,700,000 in various infrastructure projects and not one penny of it coming from taxpayer dollars. Um, frankly, absent the existence of the municipal authority, one of two things would have happened. Um, the taxpayers would have borne much of those costs uh, or two, because of all of the other competing interests that you all are forced to deal with, many of those may not have been able to be funded with all of the other competing projects uh, underway. So I think the value that is added um, is, you know, it's hard to calculate that. And I think there's still a lot more projects to do. And you'll continue to see these sorts of, of significant financial investments into these areas that you all don't have to make difficult decisions uh, for our taxpayers to pay for those. And kudos to Jack. Uh, he's modest, but Jack has uh, come up with ways to layer these grants and to build these partnerships that make these all very attractive for the funders to do as well. Thank you, Jack. And, and please convey our appreciation to the members of the municipal authority. They've done a great job. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right.